how about let, let, let's talk a little bit about framing uh composition you know to me that's what it all comes down to right it's two things lighting yeah. composition that's yeah. it you want to put all cinematography into into two words <laughs> that's what it is basically um but so so why don't you tell us a little bit about the the i think the the wide shot and what what is in there that's making the shot i mean to you i think these things are i mean let's be honest when you're there you're doing these minor, most tiniest little minutia movers with the camera that, oh, there it is, got it. So mm -hmm. now looking at the final image, maybe you can point out to the audience some of, the, some of those things that you nailed after finally you know, getting that frame just right so that they can you know, try to repeat it potentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, so going back to the wide shot, um, for me, my goal was to define the space um, you know, basically to tell, you know, time, location, uh, um, and, and give, give it some atmosphere and, and, and define the people. So, so the first problem that we came across was, you know, cop car didn't work. So uh, the first element for me, since we couldn't show a wide shot of the cop car, was to figure out how to, you know, convincingly show a cop car that, that, that doesn't, it doesn't work. So um, it's about finding somewhere in the frame to put those lights that that makes it believable that that, that it's a cop car. Uh, um, so which is why I kind of put them down down the lower left hand uh, foreground there. And then the second part was you know defining the the space. Um, if we went if we went any any wider, um, the frame would have felt felt too empty because literally what you see. There in the frame is pretty much the only interesting bits. Uh, the rest of it is dark alleys, and we didn't have the lights or the time to uh, shape more details in the background to bring out. Um, you know, so, so that, there. That that to me seems like that's probably where. I mean, I, I think you kind of went one step ahead without realizing because it's so obvious to you. But I think that's where it all started for you. Is basically you saw these these boxes. That's it. That's our scene. That's where it's going to be all centered around. And, you, yep. and that's what you had to work with. So once you saw that, okay, now I have, I have to frame based on that, th that element. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, maybe give us a little bit more. I, I'm seeing some things. I'm trying to get you to say it instead of me saying it. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, but I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things here. But, the, but basically, you know, you're, not, you're not shooting this profile, and you're also not yeah. shooting it straight on. I'm seeing that I'm seeing that sidewalk kind of go off into the distance. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and how that you know. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I try to do, especially on lower budget things, is make the world feel bigger than it actually is. Mm. Um, and one of the ways that you know I try to accomplish that is you know in um, you know what's appropriate for the story is to um, hint at things that are outside of the frame. Yeah. Um, so there, uh, there's a teeny little light that's way back in the background. Um, there, it's up in the upper right hand corner yeah. on part of the shot, and that's actually you know a light off of a bridge. And there's um, some other ambient lights that that are kind of off off in the distance that they don't play very strongly, but it's enough detail to to suggest that there's there's more to this world. There's more going on. Mm -hmm. and, um, so so when I when I shot when when I set it up. Um, I wanted to imply more depth, and, and I wanted to imply more more to the world going around. Um, so that's why I, I set it up at an angle um, to to add some more dynamic to the scene, and also just to suggest that there's a world that that goes on outside of this frame that we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's awesome. Uh, and I, you know, I really like that. I mean, when I see it, I just think plain old good. You know. The geometry feels right, you know. Yeah. It's going off into the distance, but I really like the way you just put that uh, in 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 the, in the context of of story, which is what it really is all about. I mean, maybe those are some things that I do subconsciously without realizing, but that that's great. It just goes on. There's something out there. You you know it as a viewer that that, that this place is bigger than what just little this little bit that we're seeing, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what that did. Wow, that's great. Nice explanation there. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, how about uh, um, you know further along in the in this uh, in this film, there the cops are go, you know so they get a tip from her where to go to find the bad guy, <laughs> and and they end up in this building down a hallway, and I'm just visualizing 
this hallway before you got your hands on it lit and it being the most ridiculous thing to work with ever. <laughs> like, you know, cinematographer's nightmare. This thing is so ugly. Yeah. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I think the walls are white even. I'm not even sure, but they're kind of like maybe an off-white or whatever. Um, so how did you handle that? Because that's like the biggest challenge that I come across all the time is white walls and everything is lit. Obviously, just, you know, you start by turning everything off and then now you have a, bl a blank slate. How did you deal with this? And, 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 and yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, that that part was um, was all orchestrated via the the location scout. So I believe like a day or two before, um, we we you know found that we had this had this location to us, which was a um, just a great location as far as like textures go. Uh, it, it was an it was an abandoned hotel, uh, um, and so there so there are lots of good textures in there. Um, you know, later in the film you see. Um, you know, them them go into this room that's essentially torn apart. Yeah. Um, so the, so I like the texture bit of it, um, but there was a lot in that hotel that you know was just white walls, really boring, really not not interesting. Um, so when I was looking at it, I was essentially figuring out, okay, what parts of this are interesting to see? You know, if if, if I just blast light everywhere, it's going to be white. It's going to be boring. It's not going to be you know, in, engaging to the story. Um, the, this whole story is a bit of a mystery, so I can actually play up more of the darkness um, because we're um, not quite sure what's going on. And, and to add to the mystery, you know, the more you don't see, the the, um, the more it you know, propels the, the story forward. Um, so, so for me, as I was scouting the location, it was about, you know, finding, finding the bits of the location that, that look good uh, um, or, or that at least caught my eye and then, lighting those those areas so first off what were some of the challenges with this hallway are you is this during the day is there light coming in did you have to block light out or you're at night and so it was easier and you and you have a blank slate what, what was those what was that about yeah the um it, it was at night so the so that was really helpful okay. um but because it was an abandoned hotel we had no power um so we had so we had so we had to bring in uh one of our friends um little putt putt generators it was a I think it was like a 2000 watt generator. Um, so, you know, we didn't have a, a, a whole lot of power. Um, so what, what we did is while we were shooting the previous scenes of the, you know, cops arriving and all that stuff, um, I had uh, the gaffer and um, some other, and, you know, PAs uh, basically run, I think it was like three or 400 feet of, of cable uh, um, around in that location because we were up on the, we were up on the third floor and we could only uh, safely get the generator up to the second floor. Uh, um, so <laughs> safely, so, huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah well, uh, the, w w where the fire escape was, um, you know, it, it's where we put the generator out, and you know, we didn't feel quite comfortable putting a generator inside of a torn down wood filled uh, hotel. <laughs> yeah. Tell me so, about. So yeah, so it's all about running all kinds of cable, and then, um, and then we basically used at Home Depot uh, or any you know, hardware store. Um, there are these like work lights that that sure. um, run off of extension cords, and they drop down, and it's just like a, a socket. Yeah. Um, so uh, you mean like yeah. the square? You mean the square ones that have like a little grid in the front of it? That kind of a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so so that's what we used for that for that hallway, and basically I figured out where I wanted for the whole hallway. The whole hallway shot is shot with those lights. Yeah. Yep. Okay, because I'm seeing. I mean, I'm looking at this hallway shot. They're coming through. I see two flashlights. There's, I think, a light in the back, kind of. You know, there's. Like oh, a little... yeah, 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 yeah. In 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 the back back far, um, far. Of the um, of the hallway, yeah, uh, yeah, of, of the hallway. I do have a little. Um, it, it's another work light. It, it's not a movie light. Yeah. Um, and so it's a little like clip light that has a, um, I believe, like a two hundred watt bulb in it. Uh, um, that that's bringing out some detail in, in in the background. But the but as far as like their walk down down the hallway, those those pools of light are, are just coming from that strip of, uh, of, of work lights that, that's hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I see. So, you, uh -huh. so that's what I didn't understand. So you have on the ceiling 
uh, I, I'm only seeing one, but you're trying to tell me there's a couple of uh, uh, sections. Well, I mean, I have to look throughout through all the hallway shots, but is there? Is it's a long hallway, so you're yeah. trying to tell me there's one or two work lights coming from the top, and they're basically right. able to light just a little sliver of the hall. Yep. Yeah, and exactly. Did, did you have to snoot it, did, or, or you know, or did it just naturally light? You know, you know. Yeah, it, it just naturally fell that way. Um, and when I saw them on, I, you know, I I just went with it because I, you know, one we didn't have a lot of time, and two, um, I actually liked how it how it ended up falling um, falling on the light, or I mean, on the walls. Now the far light, how is that on the floor? A little two hundred watt, like you said, on the floor, yep. pointing towards the corner. Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. I see. Uh, and then, and then also, as far as what are you doing in the camera? Are you because it almost seems like uh, you know, unless you unless you got dimmers on those work lights, it seems like it might be too bright. Did you are you in your camera knocking down a lot of the light? Or um, we actually threw um, some dimmers on on those lamps um, to okay. you know to yeah. control them, and since they're all on the same um, same extension cord. Then you know one dimmer was able to to handle it because yeah. each bulb in there was um, three hundred. Actually, I'm not I'm not sure which bulbs we ended up using because I had I had two bulb or I had three different bulbs there. Um, I had a, a hundred watt uh, soft um, you know the bulb, and then I had a hundred watt clear bulb, and then I had a sixty watt clear bulb, and I know we changed them out a couple times. Um, and I, I think it might have been the 60 watt clear bulb that we ended up using, but it was one of the two clear bulbs that we used.